Okay, let's get some sound happening. So open up the sample editor. You can click up here or the hotkey is command option S on my Mac. There we go. And right click in this area with this white line and hit new. And we're gonna create a new sample. It's going to be 64 samples long. If you're creating music with melody and harmony, you're probably gonna want this to be 64 samples or a multiple of 64. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. All right, it's yellow now. So let's right click and hit generators, sign, and volume, let's uh, make it 100%, one period, boom, there's our sine wave. So 64 samples go by very quickly. Uh, I'm going to hit Z on the keyboard and you're gonna, you're gonna hear the pop of the 64 samples. But we're gonna wanna loop this sample and down here is the loop looping box. And so let's hit forward. There we go, and we have sound. So it might be a loud sine wave. So to adjust the volume, we can either create the sine wave again and make the volume say 50%. Or we can hit the vol button down here and enter new volume in percent, 50%. Okay, and now we have a quieter sine wave. And this button down here uh, will apply the last edit on the sample. So it says redo filter, but it applies to volume and a bunch of other effects. So we can hit that a few times. And we can also always undo it. Okay. So close the sample editor so you can hit this button or command option S. And we put the sine wave on instrument 01 up here. So let's name it sine. Now we hit space bar and this bar turns red. So that means it's ready to record some notes. And we're going to record some notes using the keyboard. Uh, the keyboard is set up like a piano. So the key Z is a C and the key Q is the C an octave above. And you can use F1 and F7 to change the range. So F1 plus Z will give you the lowest note, C0. F7 plus Q will give you the highest C, which is C7. And the highest is F7 plus U, which is a B7. So you can actually get a C major scale just by running your finger along the, the bottom row from, from Z. And then from Q, all the way up to B7. Amazing, so I'm just going to use the arrows and the shift key and select all of these, hit delete, and I don't know, let's record something more interesting here. Let me be uh, something an, an octave below. So let's do F6. do a few more. There we go. And now this is a lot of notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the length of this pattern a little shorter. And I'm going to hit this button up here, the minus button. And you're going to see, I'm just scrolling with the mouse and you're going to see all the rows disappear. So let's just go up to one F. That's good. And I'm going to hit enter to listen to our composition and escape to stop. Right on, so now we can make this sound more interesting using the instrument editor, but for the purpose of getting familiar with the sample editor, we're gonna create some more sounds. So let's create another sample and we're gonna select instrument number two up here, open the sample editor, command option S, and we're going to make another sample. So right click new and let's enter, let's say, let's make it 10 times longer. So 640 and right click generators, triangle, let's use a triangle this time volume, let's make it 50%. And the sample size is 10 times longer. So let's make the number of periods 10 times longer. And there's our triangle wave. So we're not gonna loop this one. Instead, we're gonna apply a fade to the sample. So hit range all, that's going to select the entire sample. Right click, advanced, volume fade. And we're going to start volume at 100% and end at 0% and you're going to see the fade built right into the sample. Close the sample editor, and let's input some notes. Let's make them lower notes. So I'm gonna hit F4 and then, Z, and then Z. See what this sounds like.
Nice. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, oh, let's name our instrument here. So that was a triangle wave. So we'll select O3, open up the sample editor, right click, select new. Let's make it 100 times the uh, original sample length and hit OK. Uh, generators, let's make this a square wave and let's make it 25% volume, number of periods, 100. There we go. And on this one, let's create a fade in. So we're going to hit range all to select the entire sample, right click, advanced, volume fade, and we're going to do the opposite of what we did before. So we're going to start the volume at 0% and uh, finish the sample at 100%. There we go. And let's close the sample editor and let's um, input some more notes. All right, it's a little too loud, so I'm going to open up the sample editor again, and I'm going to use the volume effect, and I'm going to decrease the volume by 50%. And we can play and listen at the same time, so let's do it again. Here we go. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to make this even longer. So I'm going to um, take this, create a brand new one, and let's make it a thousand times longer. And generator square, number of periods, a thousand, volume and percent, 25. We did 25 last time, so let's try 10%. And we'll hit range all, right click, gener uh, advanced, Volume fade zero to 100. Okay, now let's see what that sounds like. Nice, and just for fun, we can name this square. Right on. So there are advantages and disadvantages to creating volume tails this way. So right here, we have a volume tail that's fading in. In the triangle, we have a volume tail that's fading out. There's no change in volume with the sine wave. The biggest problem is that every time an unlooped sample is called, is being played at a speed that is determined by the note. So you can see here that the actual lengths of your notes is being shorter or longer, just depending, just because this is on a C6 and this is on an E6. So if I made this, let's say a C5, or a C4. Whoops, let's make them all C4. There you go. Now you can really see that the note determines the speed in which the sample is played back. So to solve this problem, we're going to look at the instrument editor in the next tutorial to create more consistent volume tails. Thanks for watching. Again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and consider becoming a patron for access to all these tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.